When I was 12 years old, I almost raped the paper boy. <laughs> when he would come to uh, get paid for, you know, for the bill, my mother would have the money, I'd snatch it out of her hand, and I would say, I'll do it. And I would give him the money, I would stand really close to him. And I would breathe on him <laughs> as he punched the card. <sighs> and as he ran away, and they always ran away, <laughs> I would yell out, By the time I was 14, I was in the full throes of guy craziness. <laughs> I spent a lot of time at a friend's house, Marsha Jenkins. Marsha had six brothers. <laughs> and all those brothers had a lot of friends. And her oldest brother, who I had a crush on, used to cut hair. So there were a lot of older guys there, which I liked a lot. I spent a lot of time at Marsha Jenkins' house. <laughs> One day, Mr. Jenkins came home from work. Mr. Jenkins was a good looking guy, kind of stocky, very dark skinned, and he always was smoking a pipe. He either had it in his mouth or in his hand, where you'd see one, you see the other. So one day we were just hanging out in Marsha's living room and he said, hey girls, what's going on? Who do you love? Who do you hate? Let's talk about it. I thought, ooh, I'm gonna talk to this guy. He's an adult, he can tell us stuff. So we pummeled him with questions. Uh, why does a boy, um, ask you for your number and then he doesn't call you? <laughs> or why does he call you one time and then he doesn't call you again? And he explained that a lot of guys were very insecure. <laughs> they had a self-worth problem. And they kind of felt like maybe they weren't up to stuff. Generally speaking, if a guy doesn't call you back, it has nothing to do with you. It has to do with him. I said, okay, but then one day, he shared something with us that blew my mind. He said <laughs> that the real problem was parents. Parents keep boys and girls separate. And then all of a sudden, at age 16, they want the boys and girls to get together. But boys and girls are afraid of each other. They don't know each other. It's our fault. I thought this was very deep. <laughs> I thought this was so intellectual, so philosophical. It just blew my mind. One day I was coming home and I see a car in front of my house that I did not recognize. It was a Pontiac. I walked up the driveway into the side door and as I walked into the house I heard two people laughing in the living room. I walked through the kitchen, got to the dining room, and that's where I saw them on the couch. My mother and Mr. Jenkins. <laughs> they were sitting very close on the couch in the middle of the day, and my mother was laughing to beat the band. Her, her head swerved around, and she saw me. She looked very flushed. She jumped up way too quickly, and she began to press down the wrinkles on her slacks, frantically. <laughs> oh, Donna, you're home. 
uh, look, uh, why don't you sit down and uh, uh, right here and, and talk to Mr. Jenkins. I have something to get upstairs. This was the first time I had ever seen Mr. Jenkins at our house when my father wasn't there. <laughs> my mother walked up the stairs and she stole a glance at Mr. Jenkins. It was a look I had never seen her give my father. And Mr. Jenkins returned the favor. I felt really uncomfortable. I'm sitting very close to Mr. Jenkins on the couch. I'm looking down at the floor. And then Mr. Jenkins said, Ooh, Donna, you look just like your mother. <laughs> I could hear him breathing. <sighs> <sighs> And then I jumped up and I started heading towards the front door. Where are you going, Donna? You just got here. Tell my mother I'm going to the store. I forgot something. And I wandered around the neighborhood for a couple of hours waiting till dinner time. And when I got home, my mother gave me a very funny look and she said, I wondered where you were, but I didn't tell anybody. I didn't tell anybody. For the next 20 years, a lot of things happened. My parents got a divorce when I was a senior in high school. My father remarried. He got another divorce. I went to college. I got married. I got a divorce. I moved to New York. I became an actor. Now we're in the early 1980s. I have flown home to visit my father in Akron, Ohio. One day, he was telling me a funny story about a lot of people that I knew. And one of those characters was Mr. Jenkins. I waited until the laughter died down, and I said, Look, uh, Daddy, um, what did you think of him? I mean, was, were you two close friends? My father's face turned to stone. And he said, I thought we were, but one day... I saw something. I said, you saw something? And I tried to keep my face as blank as possible. <laughs> he said, there was a time when Mr. Jenkins didn't have a car. So what uh, would happen is that my parents would go grocery shopping. They'd take him with them. He'd do his grocery shopping. He'd help them carry the stuff into the house, and then my father would take him home with his groceries. One day they had all three gone grocery shopping. My mother was in the front, Mr. Jenkins was in the middle, my father was taking up the rear. They were coming into our house. And my mother kind of tripped on the stairs. And Mr. Jenkins reached up and grabbed her ass. And she kind of giggled. My father said, I didn't say anything. I waited until the next day. He went by Mr. Jenkins' house. Mr. Jenkins was sitting on the porch, smoking his pipe. And he leaned out the window and said, come on, man, come go with me for a minute. Mr. Jenkins got into the, uh, the car. He said, what's going on, man? He said, look, I'm looking at some property. I want you to take a look at it with me and tell me what you think. My father was always looking at property. So they drove way, way out by Montrose, which is where the drive-in movie theater was. My father picked an isolated spot, and he reached into his glove compartment and pulled out his pistol. And he put it up against Mr. Jenkins' head. I saw you put your hand on my wife yesterday. I didn't like it. Oh no, Frank, 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 you, you misunderstood. I mean, she tripped. He said, I know she tripped. I saw it, but that's my wife. And if she needs help getting up the stairs, 
I will help her. What do you think, I'm some kind of fool? If I ever see you put your hand on my wife again, I'm gonna blow your brains out. By this time, Mr. Jenkins lost control of his bladder. <laughs> and my father decided to put the pistol away in case he lost control of his bowels <laughs> and messed up his car. <laughs> So I'm sitting there with a straight face going, wow, wow. <laughs> so what happened after that, Dad? He said, well, you know, Mr. Jenkins got a Pontiac, and after that he didn't have any more car problems. <laughs> now, I don't know how many of you have been following this story. Mr. Jenkins came to visit my mother in the middle of the day after he had had a gun put to his temple. I was tempted to tell my father what had happened that day, but what was the point? My parents were divorced. Mr. Jenkins had died of brain cancer, and way back in the 70s, he had died pretty young. So this is the first time I'm telling this story. It's been a secret all this time. So I'm going to dedicate this story to two people. The first is my father, who was technically my stepfather, who helped me uh, how to ride a bike. He also helped me to sell Girl Scout cookies on his postal route. He died of cancer at the age of 83 in 1999. Rest in peace, Daddy. And for Julius Jenkins, Sr., wherever you are in the afterlife, you can take this story that I just told and you can put it in your pipe and smoke it. <laughs>